With that, I would like to introduce Nicola Marini Bianzino of Ernst & Young to introduce the first award winner of the night in the category of Game Changer slash Life Changer. The animating spirit of this award is you and your company changed how things are done or viewed, and there's no going back. Thank you, Rich. Good evening. I always had this dream of having to open the envelope, but I guess you already know who the winner is. But anyway, it will be the next time. So um, I'm very honored to be here. It's the first time, you know, I just joined the, the Church Club as the board members, but I've been in the audience for, I, I think, most of the eight years, you know, before this. And what I want to just uh, a comment that I had is that, you know, we are all very busy in our lives and we run from one meeting to the other, but these nights are a little bit special because I think they create, they create kind of a, I, I would call it like a mindfulness moment where we can pause, look around and get in touch with technology and innovation we don't see every day, right? And I think this is specifically the case for, uh, for Peloton because it brings together two things that are passion of mine, which is one is sport and the other one is technology. So I just want to introduce uh, you know, Graham Stanton, you know, is the recipient of the Game Changer Award on uh, on behalf of Peloton, right? Peloton, for the people, the few people I'm sure that don't know about them, you know, it's a connected platform, right, for fitness, where you can really have, you know, a very meaningful interaction with your personal trainer and sessions and class without actually leaving your house. So it's a combination of finding the right training and technology through technology, right, which is absolutely fantastic. So. Let me welcome Graham on stage and you know, congratulations for the award. Thank you. Thank and, also, you. and also let me introduce, sorry, Ray Wong, who's uh, you know, the founder and principal researcher of uh, Constellation Research. Very cool, let's start. There we go, it's right here in front. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think that's yours. Yeah, there we go. Well, good evening, everybody. How are you guys doing? So who here in the audience has a Peloton? Raise your hands. All right. Who here in the audience wants a Peloton? <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Well, this is really cool. I, look, we've been following the company for quite some time, understanding how it works. You're, you guys started when nobody was wanting to help you out, when nobody was like, people were like, what is this idea? Where are we headed? What are we doing? Um, and you're one of five founders. Tell us about the founders and how they're all a little bit different, how they're the same, and why you're all committed to that same level of passion. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, there, there are five of us, and um, yeah, we're more different than the same, even if we're all about the same height. And <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, it was uh, John Foley's idea initially. He's our uh, he's our CEO, and he, he roped the rest of us into it. Um, yeah, four of us. Um, John, Tom Cortese, our uh, COO and product visionary, um, and uh, yeah, Hisao Kushi, our uh, chief legal officer, and I had all worked together in the past at IAC, um, and uh, Yoni Fang, our CTO, was uh, a uh, you know, very strongly attested um, referral from uh, someone else we'd worked with. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, at least you know, a, a few of us had this vague sense that we wanted to work together again someday in some, some hypothetical future. Um, in the years pre-Peloton, we'd, we'd gone our separate ways a little bit. Um, and uh, you know, I actually first heard the idea from John uh, when we bumped into each other at an e-commerce conference. It, it was um, it, it was an event for e-commerce leaders and. Uh, you know, at the time when no one really wanted to talk about anything other than how do we survive in an Amazon dominated world. And John was the celebrity invited guest as a head of e-commerce for Barnes and Noble. Um, and uh, yeah, it made, made sense that, yeah, of course, everyone wanted to know what it was like being on the front lines. Um, and, and we were catching up and, and he talked about that a little bit. And, and then after a while he said, 
but you know what I'm really excited about? I, I got this new idea. And, and that took me back a little bit. I, I, I thought maybe it'd spring something on me. And, and they said, um, okay, well, well, picture like a, a studio bike and, and there's a screen on it and, and you look through the screen and you're taking a class. And, and you know, Don had been a, a tech executive for a while and they, they, this is not what I was expecting, but I, I loved it. Um, I, I'd actually just started taking uh, indoor cycling classes myself. And yeah, you know, when, when I thought about some more, it made sense. John and uh, his wife, Jill, had really gotten into it. And, and that's kind of all they would talk about. Um, but I, I didn't get how special it was initially. I think it, it really had to grow over time. And I, and I, I think that was the same for, for all of us. Um, yeah, it, Tom, I, Tom came on board a couple months after he finished his Ironman. Um, and he was, he was ready to do something that maybe connected something there. And, you know, beyond being a product visionary, he's also the scrappiest person I know. And he opened the very first office. Um, and that his house helped start the company and Yoni came on, um, to be the, the tech lead and, um, you know, my involvement right at the beginning actually was, I was one of, uh, the seed investors, John reached out to, I, I think I was one of two or three people on the list for whom that, that small seed investment was a lot of money and you know, we really, really felt it. But, um, yeah, I knew John was a force of nature and I liked the idea um, and, and this seemed like a, a good bet. And so when when he asked me to come on board full time, um, I didn't hesitate. I said, yes, of course, I'll move across the country and work for no money. Uh, this is <laughs> this, this is a no brainer. This, this idea is going to work. Yeah, you know, we're going to raise lots of money and then it's going to be well funded and it'll work. And um, of course, I didn't foresee that we'd actually yeah, I've raised zero dollars from VC, and we'd almost run out of money many times, and it would be you had a bunch really of hard. <laughs> so, but but at the time, it seemed like a sure thing. <laughs> this was 2012, right? Uh, yeah, this was mid 2012. <laughs> mid 2012. Wow. Now, a lot of people describe you a lot of different things. I've heard media company, tech company, sports company, retail logistics. There's a lot of intersectionality here. So, kind of explain what in your world, what what is the company, and where does it where is it headed? Yeah. So, um, it, it's it's a lot, um, and, and we didn't initially set out that way, but it, it started to you know, come together like that very quickly, uh, and it's really because initially we wanted to create an experience. You know, we knew the we knew these boutique fitness classes and kind of dark rooms with loud music worked really well. We enjoyed them, um, but there, there's something special about that experience that. Need, that to recreate that in the home took lots of different pieces. Um, so just one by one, you know, we ruled out using a third party bike. Um, as we said that, well, all the bikes that existed at that point were really designed for sweaty gyms and people wouldn't want it in their living room. Um, and then, well, we need this to be an immersive experience. So you, you can't, you know, it, we, we were nervous about just putting you know, your phone or a tablet um, on there, especially at, at the time, uh, we needed something sweatproof, and we wanted a big screen. Um, Those big screens didn't exist at that point in time. They they didn't. Uh, in fact, um, you know, when we started calling suppliers, they th they thought we were crazy, saying we wanted yeah you know, we wanted a projective capacitive twenty one inch yeah, screen. Uh, um, thankfully, we, we found a couple people who were just starting to make them, but the the, the applications weren't out there. Um, so. Yeah, we, we just kind of had to create everything from scratch that way. And, and it, it got to the point where a, as we were doing it, like, we had to make a decision on the content. Like, where, where do these classes come from? And, and we always thought, well, maybe we, we'd partner with a, you know, one big studio or a, you know, maybe a, you know, buy a small one. Or, um, and, and, it, and we realized that if people were taking these classes around the world, we needed the best instructors on the planet. Um, all in one place. And so that meant that we were opening an indoor cycling studio. Um, and, and as I say all this, I, I'm starting to understand why all those VCs turned us down. <laughs> and, but, this is the one in Chelsea, right? The, the studio that you guys have? Yeah. Um, but, but initially it was in the back of our office and uh, Tom went to Kmart and bought all the black sheets. <laughs> and, and he had to say that, no, it's not for my bachelor pad. Like, we're actually using these for something. And you know, we, we kind of rigged it up. But um, 
Yeah, we, we knew we had to open a real studio with cameras and streaming technology, which of course we also had to build and you know, it was a lot. So, so the technology is not there. The manufacturing capacity is not there. The content's not there. Like when did you decide Peloton was a game changer? It, it, it took some time to really realize that, you know, the, the, the question comes up, is you know, Peloton you know, a game changer? Has it, it, it actually changed you know, things for the, for the world or for you know, a large number of people? Um, from the beginning, I know it would be a game changer for me personally um, because I love the product. Um, yeah, I love the product so much. I bought one on Kickstarter with my own money. Um, <laughs> right back to the company had no money, so we didn't give out freebies to anybody, um, including the founders. <laughs> and so like, I loved it. We, like our friends loved it. Um, it. It started. It started to build up, and we said, "Okay, well, there, there are people out there who, who like this experience. It's a great experience." Uh, but it didn't start to click until this this online community formed. Um, and it, it got to the point where people actually traveled to New York City um, to take classes at the studio, but not just to take classes at the studio, but to meet each other. Um, you know, people they met through Peloton. And you know, they even they, they they did what they called home writer invasion. And they invaded our office. Um, and that, that, that's grown into the homecoming event we did this last year where over 3,000 people came to New York um, to see their instructors and also to see each other. I mean, Vande, Robin, Jen, Nicole, these are all household names in the Peloton world. So it's been pretty crazy to watch that community light up. So now your role right now, you've had different mm -hmm. roles in the company. Um, you were doing um, a analytics before and then now you're doing um, what, what, what space in this space? Yeah. Um, yeah, my, my role is uh, business intelligence, um, and that, that grew out of um, that grew out of the performance marketing team. Um, so in our initial our initial marketing was uh, that I was sitting in the Facebook console, that uh, creating the ads myself and and measuring everything. Um, but our our whole approach there kind of date you know traces back to you know I said that we were running out of money. Um, and that, that kept us really disciplined. That made, meant that everything we had to do, everything we did had to work. Um, and the, the failure was not an option. Inaction wasn't an option. Um, we, we actually had to you know, sell some bikes. Um, we believed in the product. We just had to, we believed we just had to get it out there. Um, so we were very data driven about it, our, all our advertising right from the start, which actually gave us the confidence to start doing TV ads and running and run really brand driven pieces or seemingly brand driven advertisements early in our history and um, actually in our first year of sales, uh, because we had the data side to actually measure it and show that it would work and know that we're getting bang for the buck. Um, and that was the origin of that. So the data and the community and the technology all started coming together. That community piece is probably the strongest element of what you guys have. So talk more about the community. Like, how crazy are folks? How how much how much are they fans? How much are they advocates? Oh, they, uh, people. Um, you know, people are are fan are fans. We we have we have tattoos. Um, it's uh, you know our instructors have become celebrities. It's uh, you know it, it was kind of what we hoped for there, but you know we we never took it for granted, and uh, um, you know we we viewed it as, as an honor that um, people viewed that would take Peloton to be such an important part of their lives. And, and we actually, you know, we kind of shifted the company. We, we made it very clear that our number one value when uh, we come into work every day is members first. Um, and, and it seems kind of, you know, trite and silly to say, but, you know, we have it in our indoctrination when people come and then you know, they're onboarded as new employees. Um, people are encouraged and uh, they, they do, Go to, to go to showrooms, meet prospective members, existing members, um, shadow support calls, even go for ride-alongs with our field ops delivery teams, just to see what that's all about. Um, and because I think the the real privilege we have in, in coming to work is that you know when Peloton does right by its members, Peloton does well. And many of us have had jobs in the past where yeah the yeah the success of the customer and the success of the business were. Um, not necessarily at odds, but independent. And it, it's really nice when it's 100% aligned. Now, that's the kind of uh, leadership we're looking for right now. I mean, companies are looking to 
you know, people and citizens and customers are looking for that kind of leadership where the customer comes first, people are responsible for their customers and, and the type of product. So that's, that's very impressive. Let's, let's give them a round of applause because we're, we're missing that. So when you look back, I mean, that's a long seven years, right? When a startup, like what, what are you gonna remember most about Peloton? Not that you're leaving, mm -hmm. not that you're going anywhere, just to take this moment in time to reflect on, on, on that journey. Yeah. Well, when I look back today, um, I remember how much harder everything was than uh, we thought it was going to be every single step of the way. Um, and that we persevered and made it through. Um, and yeah, that, that it was all worth it. I, I don't just mean today. I mean, it was you know, every milestone was its own reward. Um, and but we had to solve our own problems. And so that, you know, I, at, at this point, I'd really love, I, I you know, feel this like strong urge to go out and you know, like, you know, speak to new founders and, say, and, and give all sorts of advice. But you know, one thing we learned was to take all advice with a grain of salt. And we realized even the well-meaning advice just didn't apply to us and we had to solve it ourselves. Wow, that's, a, that's very, very powerful. So, okay. Um, Quick lightning round. It was a little fun with this. All right, favorite instructors. You got a lot out there. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got I, some of the audience. Audience, what awesome. are your favorite instructors? Yell out. Yeah, we, <laughs> Ali is great. Uh, they're they're all great, I, I, and I really mean that just because I, mean, I do take a lot of classes. And I take all of them. All right, best workout class. Uh, I like uh, I like the ones that are really intense. So I, I like um, mostly because uh, yeah, I, I like that they're kind of over with more quickly. Um, <laughs> so I like the interval classes and that they, they feel longer, but I, I, I get into it. Um, but actually recently, uh, my favorite has been our outdoor running classes, audio only uh, through Peloton Digital. It, um, they take me into work. It's my morning commute. I run into work. It's one of the advantages of living in New York City, um, and I've been enjoying them. Wow, livable cities. Um, so actually, related to that, I'm a favorite time to work out, and I'll ask you something we talked about earlier. Favorite yeah, um, yeah, def definitely morning. That's what works out for me. Okay, but you, you actually showed up to the hotel and did your own workout uh, today, you said, so like I, a few hours ago. I, I did. Um, it was kind of like a re-wake up upon you know, landing in the plane getting ready for the evening um, but yeah i got on one of the bikes here used peloton digital and it all worked all right favorite flavored ice cream um if there's a really really good vanilla i'll go for that otherwise i <laughs> usually go for pistachio if it's available <laughs> <laughs> all right well we're here with uh, thank you so much for being here graham and uh, please give a round of applause for being a game changer in life so thank awesome. you right congratulations